Welcome everyone to Fallout 76. In today's video, I will be doing a full walkthrough step by step from start to finish and showing you guys how to set off a nuke. We're going to do the very first quest you have to do up until the actual nuke launch itself. So do bear with me, the video is going to be pretty long today. But really quickly before we begin, recently I uploaded a video a few hours ago how to launch the nuke, which showing how to just launch the nuke itself and what happens after you launch it. Some people are taking that as this video right here. I even state in the first 30 seconds of that video that I'm making a full walkthrough like step by step, but I guess some people just don't listen. That video is just showing how to actually launch the nuke and how the nuke works itself. The other thing to mention as well is that we're going to be going through every quest that you have to do in order to get to the nuke to launch the nuke. So if you want to skip around, I will leave some timestamps down below, either in the comment section or the description, and you can skip around as you need to. So in case you've already done that mission or just don't want to watch the entire thing, it's up to you. So now let's begin. So here is a list of everything that we have to do in order to launch a nuke. At least this is what I had to do in order to launch a nuke. Now the very first thing we have to do on this list, as you can see, is join the Enclave. Now in order to join the Enclave, it's a pretty long quest itself, a mission itself. Pause this video right now. I already have a video on my channel showing a full walkthrough that is a link right here in this annotation in the top right. If you have not done this yet, then go there. If you have already done that, then good job, now you're on part two. So once you have joined the Enclave and are fully a part of them, you have to go and join the U.S. Army. Now this was the next mission I got from the Enclave to do. Basically to set off nukes, you have to be a general to get access to the silos. So this is where you're going to go to enlist. So if you look right here on your map, you can go right here on your map. It's right next to Flatwoods. It's basically just a U.S. Army boot camp area. And it's actually pretty fun. So when you get here, you're actually going to actually want to head upstairs and talk to a little robot called Master Sergeant Gutsy. And he's going to tell you to go get an army uniform, which is also pretty fun. And once you have your army uniform, you have to complete three things for your basic training. One is agility. One is uh, like intelligence or recon, which is pretty funny because you have to spot out the communists. And the third one is uh, your marksmanship or shooting the agility course was pretty fun it's timed you can try to beat your time over and over again it's pretty fun to do the picking out the communist one was interesting um, it's not that it's hard it's just kind of time consuming because it's a lot of just listening to things and reading diaries and figure out which one is the communist which for me it was Jimmy and the sharpshooting one was just that you just Take a gun. Don't take anything that's bolt action because you might run out of time. Just use like a little semi-automatic pistol or something. Shoot the targets and you are done. So after you are done and you report back to Master Sergeant Gutsy, you will now become an officer in the U.S. Army and you can move on to your next mission in the Enclave. Now this next one is what took me the longest to do. And it's because you have to become a general. And in order to do so, you have to do 10 accommodation missions or events in order to become a general. And this is what's hard because these events are just random events on the map. You can kill legendary creatures. Or you can sometimes just do like these little random quests that just give you the combinations as well. The fastest way that I found was just a server hop until I found an Enclave mission. They look like they literally just look like normal missions on the map. There's no any indication they're there. You had to look for them. And they'll be called like Enclave mission and it'll give the name of the mission itself. It's just an event. You, go, you do the event, it'll give you one out of your ten accommodations you have to do. And these missions aren't exactly hard. A lot of them are just like, go up here, access this terminal, and activate this thing. Like, uh, a lot of them I got was activating like, these little radio things. And by doing so, it would send down orbital strikes onto the ground and kill everything around it. That's essentially what almost every Enclave mission I did was, was something along those lines. And they don't take long to do. It's just the issue of actually finding them. But once you have done that, you'll become automatically a general in the Enclave. I had to actually restart my game. Well, not restart my game. I actually had to leave the server and rejoin a new server for my uh, mission to actually carry over and complete. And by doing so, you'll get a really awesome looking general outfit. I really like the outfit they give you for being general in the U.S. Army and the Enclave, whatever you want to call it. It looks really nice. But now it takes us to the next part, and this is where we start getting serious about nukes. So in this next part, guys, what you have to do is go back into the vault, the Enclave vault at White Springs, the White Springs bunker, wherever you want to call it, and you want to go back to the military wing. Now, if you've been looking around, you will know that you have not had access to the command center yet. It's been blocked off by a grid. Once you become a general, 
it will no longer be blocked off. You now, once you actually walk into the command center, the first thing you're going to see in the back wall is Missile Silo Alpha, or Missile Silo Bravo, Missile Silo Char Charlie. Those are very important, and here's why. It'll say in progress on the back wall as well. Underneath like the word missile, throughout the week, random letters will pop up on there, and this is what will help you decrypt the codes, the nuclear codes for that week. The codes reset every week, along with your nuclear key cards, so you can't hoard them, can't stash them, they all disappear after a week. But the codes themselves and the key cards are actually not that hard to get. The key cards can be time consuming, depending on what you're using to get them weapon wise, but besides that, they're not really that hard to get. So what happens is when you go up here, to your right you're going to see four pictures on the wall, there will be four red buttons, basically by pressing this, it just gives you the tutorial of like what the nukes are, what the silos are, what the key cards are used for, what the co uh, nuclear codes are used for, blah blah blah. But in the room to the far left, there's going to be a security terminal. And this is going to be your best friend because if you open this up, it basically will give you quests where it'll find you key codes. So if you want to search for a Charlie key code, it'll put on the map where a Charlie key code is. You go there and you find the officer that has it. You kill him and you take the key code. Now for the nuclear key card, you have to destroy cargo bots, which is why it can be time consuming because it's really annoying to do. It's not that it's hard, it's just annoying. Because they're really fast, but when you're shooting at these things, aim for their thrusters. They will be escorted by a few vertibots. If you want to destroy those first, you can. Usually I do. But when you start shooting the thrusters on the cargo bot, it actually will slow down. If you're, actually, if you're able to get all four on fire smoking, it basically just stops moving. And you can just kill it really easily. Before then, though, it's like a little dark. It's pretty annoying. But once you have your key card, and you have your eight nuclear codes, this is where the hard part comes in. This is where I had issues last night. And I spent hours on multiple different websites and apps and how-to guides I could find online to actually decrypt these codes. Now, there are a few decryptors out there right now that do work. This one right here actually works. I know works for sure. I, I tested it after I launched the Charlie Silo Nuke, and it worked perfectly. The code that I was looking for was on there. Now, you actually don't have to like decrypt these yourselves. If you just wait for someone to post it on Reddit... It happens. That's how I got my key code for Charlie. I tried for hours. Nothing was working. Someone tried one of the random ones that got uh, pulled up from a decryptor and it worked. And they posted on Reddit and I gave it a try and it worked. Now, if you already have the code itself, for, like for Charlie, for example, if you watched my video from a few hours ago from Charlie, that key code works this week. It's the same key code for everyone. It works on work the entire week until the server, well, until the key codes wipe and then we get new launch codes again for next week. To my understanding, you do not need the actual eight key codes in order to launch the nuke. As long as you have the code itself, that's all you need. When I launched the nuke, I still had my eight Charlie key codes in my inventory. That's why I'm assuming that, but I don't, I can't confirm that for sure. So someone might want to test that and see, but that's just my assumption is once you have the actual code itself, you actually don't even need the eight key codes. So once you have done all this, you join the Enclave, you join the US Army, you become a general. You get your nuke card, you get the eight key codes, you decipher your code, you get your code online when someone posts it. All you have to do now is just go to a bunker, wherever bunker you have your key code for, because those key codes are different for every bunker. And you have to get through the bunker, and then you can launch your nuke. And launching the nuke is pretty simple. I made that video a few hours ago showing exactly how it's launched and what you have to do in order to launch it. And that is basically it. Now, the silo is nothing to bat an eye at. Don't, don't get me wrong. I did do it solo. You guys are going to see me doing it solo right here in this video. But it still took a while. You're going to want to bring a lot of stuff with you. So example, mine was Charlie. I don't know. I can't speak for Bravo, but I can tell you Alpha and Charlie are set up the exact same way. Everything you do, there's five stages, and everything you do is the exact same between those two. And spawns are stationary for some of the stages as, stages as well. So do keep that in mind. Once you run through these tiles a few times, it's going to become second nature and you're going to get through them really fast. But I do recommend you bring a lot of stim packs. You want to bring some Raid Away, Raid X. There is a part where you have to basically fight in radiation and get rid of the radiation to fix the reactor. I personally bring Mothman omelets because they give you 45 or 48 HP per one you eat. And it only costs one egg and one wood to actually make them. So they're super cheap to make and they give you a lot of health. Because when you're in these silos, if you're by yourself, there is a lot of stuff to kill. A lot. You're going to want a strong melee weapon in my experience. And you're going to want a rifle to shoot out turrets every now and then. 
So when you go into a bunker, you're going to first be put into a room. You're going to see right away, you're going to see a door that's locked by a laser grid. What you're going to want to do is come around the corner to the left. And in that room will be two terminals. You're going to access the terminals. And it's basically going to tell you that you need to have a biometric uh, card ID to be able to open the laser grid. So that's our next step. So what you're going to do now is go out the door, go to your right. And in the next room will be a terminal to actually make your uh, biometric ID. Now when you access the terminal, it's going to show you instructions to do so. Once you do that, you're going to turn back around. Now in this area, you're going to find like old blue ID cards. Pick one of them up. You only need one. You're going to go out of the room, go down the hallway again, turn to your right, and then turn to your left. And this is where you're actually going to be going to, I guess it scans you essentially. Because once you're scanned, you go back again to the same room where you try to uh, get your first ID made. You're going to erase that blue ID card you picked up. And then you're going to make your own biometric ID card with that erased one because it scans you. Once you do that, you go back into the first room where the terminals are and you can swipe your card and the laser grid will unlock. Now, while you're doing all this, there's a lot of turrets on the ceiling. Destroy these first. I, from what I have found so far, these turrets actually do more damage to you over time than anything else. And they are super annoying. They can shoot across every room they're in. Destroy these first. They won't respawn. Robots do respawn if you're in a room too long. They send like reinforcements. Um, but they're not too that they're not too difficult to deal with if you're a really good melee weapon. Mine that I am using in the video basically one hits almost everything. I can two hit level 32, uh, Mr. Gutsies, and there is a sentry bot in this place too. But we'll get to that pretty soon. So now that you have finished step one, it's time to move on to step two out of five. So this is where you're going to want your raid away or raid X. You're going to want some radiation resistance because this next room is basically like the reactor. And what happens is you're going to want to just run past everything. If you watch right here, I, I go through, go to the right, and I literally go back to the control room. I've done this every single time, and I have not failed it once yet. Maybe you guys have some different experiences than me, but I have not failed once d doing this method. When you get in here, there will be robots that will come at you. There is also a few assault trons in here. If you can drag them into this back room, you can fight them without getting shot by turrets. Really easy to kill with melee weapons. Once they're all dead, what you're going to do is basically access the terminal in this control room, restart the, or shut down the reactors, and it'll give you a timer of, I believe, a minute in like 30 or 40 seconds. Now, during this time, you have to actually go out in the main reactor area and start repairing pipes. You have to fix every single pipe that, that is leaking. After that is done, you go back back to the terminal and you restart the reactor and then step two is completed. Now in this room, I don't really waste time destroying the turrets in this room. You can, if you have, if you can run around enough, you can kind of just dodge them a lot because there's a lot of stuff to hide behind. But that's up to you. I just don't do it. But once that is done, you're going to want to move on to step number three and we're going to continue on. And this next part is destroying mainframe cores. Now right here, you can see it looks like a little black motherboard on this big white computer you just destroy these that's all you do and there's a lot of them in this next room but there's also like three i think i had two or three or maybe even four assault trons attack me in this room i recommend sniping the turrets out first if you can from the room that you enter prior to going to the main room and then if you can try pulling some of the assault trons or robots into that room because it'll give you a lot of wiggle room when you actually get in there to kill off the last two remaining robots but once you wipe everything in there on the far right, when you, once you enter the room to the far right, that's where the grid is, the door you have to go into, the laser grid. Once you do end up destroying all of these uh, mainframe cores, or whatever they're called, that laser will turn off and you can continue on to the next step. Now the next one is the exact opposite of what we did. So once you make your way through the miscellaneous hallways and stuff like that, you get to the next area. This is where the sentry bot is, so do take some caution. But there's also some workstations here. So make sure you are picking up every piece of scrap and stuff you get from robots. Because you can repair your weapons here. You can, you can repair your armor in one of those rooms in this area too. Your uh, power armor. It's basically like your little breathing area once you get cleared out. Now once you clear out the initial room where all your uh, workbenches are, well your weapon workbench and stuff like that anyway you're gonna see more of those mainframe cores on the ground you're gonna want to start picking these up because this next part actually has you install 15 of them to open a door so pick them up now while you see them there is a there is a minimum i know for sure of at least 15 there's probably more than 15 that spawn though but they do spawn around just look around a lot of the spawns are stationary so if you find it there once it'll be there again the next time you come through most likely now before you go into the next door 
there's a window. If you look in the window to your right, you're going to see the sentry bot. If you have grenades, this will be perfect because what I like to do is just kind of turn the corner and pop a grenade over the, like, the little uh, storage shelf there and you can hit the sentry bot a few times before it walks from the corner. That sentry bot cannot walk through the doorway, so he's pretty easy to kill. I don't know who placed him there. Wasn't really a good idea because he's not hes not really a threat if you do it right. If you run there guns blazing, he's probably going to melt you, but if you have a few grenades or you just let him sit there and shoot until he has to like recharge and just bash him with your melee weapon he dies pretty quickly but the other thing to mention is once you walk into your left there's also a turret right there in that corner as well that will shoot you so once you've cleared the room of robots there might be a salt trying or two to your left will be a big blue door to the right that will be like the terminal stuff this is where you have to actually repair the circuitry and put your uh, new cores your 15 cores there so once you find your 15 cores in this room you put them all in there you access, access the terminal again the door will open and unlock and you can walk through it now, once you have opened this door, make sure all your weapons and power armor and stuff is repaired. In one of the other rooms in that area, there is a power armor station, so make sure stuff's repaired because the next step can get pretty hard. This, it just all depends on what spawns there. So, so far we have completed four out of the five stages to accessing the silo and getting to launch a nuke. Now, the next step is to go into the actual like control room itself. And this is where things can get interesting because it's all based on what spawns there. I have, I've had legendary Soltron spawn here. Sometimes I've had like, like normal Soltrons. So it's just based off your luck, I guess, and the randomness of what's there. But once you enter this room, you're going to want to clear everything out. I like to go to the far right because there's like some hallways in the back. and you can give you, It can give you some breathing room if you destroy the turrets on the ceilings. So if you have to heal and stuff like that. But once you finally do destroy all the robots in this room, you're going to access the terminal and you're going to start the launch prep. And what happens is once you start this, a robot will come out of the room right next to you to your left and he will start working on one of the computers. Now, as the bar fills up for the launch prep, eventually you'll have a max of five and you have to defend these robots. I do not know what happens if one of them dies. I never let one of them die. I've been told that if one of them dies, you have to restart the entire silo. I cannot confirm that though, so maybe someone can down below in the comment section. But basically, this is pretty easy to defend though, but again, it's all based on what spawns. One time I had a legendary Saltron come in, it really sucked, but I got through it and I killed him. But he almost got away with killing one of my robots. The nice thing is that the robots that are attacking the ones you're defending, they mainly just focus those. They really won't focus you too much, so we'll give you some wiggle room. Plus, that room where the first robot walked out of, there's actually like explosive crate in there. If you get lucky like I did, you'll get six pulse uh, grenades as well, which will do a lot of damage to robots. So once the launch prep is finally done and over with, guys, this is where my video I uploaded today pick up on how to launch the nuke. So what you do is on the left side, you enter your nuclear key card. And once you do that, it gives you access to the actual uh, nuke code, like the pin pad on the right. And this is where you have to have the right code. If you do not have the right code, you're going to be very upset because it's going to lock you out of the nuclear launch code terminal. And you will have to go get a new nuclear key card and come back. Now, I don't know if it's a bug or what it is. I've had different instances where you come back and the silo is still wiped. And you just go back down to the room again. And then I've had other times where you come back and you have to go through the entire process again, all five stages. So make sure you have the right code. I know some people won't want to look on Reddit. You want to decrypt it. I left you that site right there. It does work. Make sure you have the right code. I cannot stress that enough. Once you do have the right code, though... You then get the option to actually pick where you want to launch the nuke. Now, there is certain areas of the map. I'm not going to try pronouncing any of it because I will butcher the words so hard. But there is certain areas on the map where if you put the nukes, I assume it either is A, going to give you a very rare resource because it's going to break something in that area. and It's going to be a super rare resource there. Or it's just a harder area. I'm not really sure. It recommends that you drop a nuke in that area. I didn't do that. I just dropped a nuke where I thought I could kill players. Um, which I did get to kill a few players. I, I actually got a few junk bags out of uh, off camera, which was pretty fun. But once you do launch the nuke, it's going to go through the silo. There's an exit to your left. You go through the exit. It brings you outside. And you can fast travel reset the nuke. Now, in my video previously, I got really excited because I thought I thought the nuke would go instantly. Um, it's like a minute 30 or two minute timer on the thing. So if it does go in an area, people get notified, or obviously, because in my video, you see... All of a sudden, there's like seven level 50 plus people in the one area killing everything. So once the nuke does hit the ground, 
it's actually not as overwhelming as I was expecting. It is still pretty cool though. You know, you get to see the rate you get to see the nuclear cloud and stuff like that. It looks it looks pretty good. It just wasn't it wasn't as overwhelming as I was hoping it would be. And I know I'm not the only one that shares that opinion. But once you have that and you're gonna to wanna to go on and just enter the area wherever you put your nuke. You're gonna find like there, I found some glowing type of fungus on a tree. There's a lot of lot of enemies to kill, and for me, these guys were giving me like 450 plus XP a kill. Now I was kind of getting carried by the level 50s there because everything was like level 50, but still, it's really good XP if you live with a good squad of people, have good weapons. You could really rack up some XP there with those with those uh, increased XP cards and stuff. I was expecting to see a lot of resources that you can only get from the nuke and maybe that will be like that if you launch it in the areas it recommends to destroy whatever it's called like the, the fizzers or something like that maybe that's the case i'm gonna launch another nuke tonight most likely and we'll see what happens i just don't know for sure yet though so maybe someone down below in the comment section can let me know because the area where i launched it there really wasn't that many nuclear resources caused by the nuke there was a few things on the trees i found and when you killed the radiated stuff that was there you got some stuff but it wasn't anything that i thought was really the bat not yet but that's basically it guys that is my experience that i had with this entire process of launching a nuke hopefully you guys found this video helpful hopefully this makes some of you guys happy because some people are mad because they thought my other video was misleading which was never my intent that video was just to show how to actually launch the nuke so if you did come from that video i appreciate you guys watching today's video i really hope this helps a lot of people out let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think, and I will see all of you guys in the next video.